Tag TV brings you daily news bulletin from India. Breaking news and views from India. Good evening, welcome to South Asia Newsline. I'm Lepakshi Khurana. Here are the top stories we're tracking for you on Wednesday, the 15th of January. India's Prime Minister Modi meets foreign ministers of Russia, Iran in New Delhi. Avalanches kill dozens in Pakistan administered Kashmir. And traditional bull taming festival Jali Katu begins in southern India. And now for all the details, India's Foreign Minister S. J. Shankar said on Wednesday that India intends to be a stabilizing force and not a disruptive power internationally. He made the remark at the three-day Rai Senior Dialogue, India's flagship global conference on geopolitics that began in capital New Delhi on Tuesday. India's Foreign Minister S.J. Shankar said on Wednesday that India intends to be a stabilizing force and not a disruptive power internationally. He made the remark on the second day of Raisina Dialogue 2020, India's flagship global conference on geopolitics and geoeconomics that began on Tuesday in capital New Delhi. Apart from panel discussion on several issues, Iran's Foreign Minister Javed Zarif and Russian Foreign Minister Sergei Lavrov also took part in the conference on Wednesday. Jay Shankar said that India has a huge diaspora, is a pool of global talent and is a pluralistic and democratic society. I think uh, it is not the India way to be a disruptionist power internationally. I think we should be a stabilizing power. I think there, is all, there are already enough forces of disruption in the world. So somebody needs to make up a bit. It's also not the India way to be self-centered, to be mercantilist. Uh, therefore, it's important to be global. It's important to be law-abiding or rule-based, whichever way you like. The Raisina Dialogue began on Tuesday with seven former heads of state or government sharing their perspective on challenges facing the world, including the U.S.-Iran tensions, Afghan peace initiatives and climate change. The inaugural session was attended by Indian Prime Minister Narendra Modi. Russian Foreign Minister Sergei Lavrov and his Iranian counterpart Javed Zarif called on Indian Prime Minister Narendra Modi in separate bilateral meetings in Indian capital New Delhi. Both leaders took part in the Rasenia Dialogue that brings together 700 international participants from over 100 countries. Russia's Foreign Minister Sergei Lavrov called on Indian Prime Minister Narendra Modi at his residence in New Delhi on Wednesday. He paid a courtesy visit to Modi after addressing the Raisina Dialogue, an annual security and geopolitical conference held in New Delhi, where he made a strong pitch for India's long-standing demand of becoming a permanent member of United Nations Security Council. Later, Iran's Foreign Minister Javed Zarif also met Prime Minister Modi, after attending the multilateral conference in New Delhi. Zarif's participation in the Raisina Dialogue assumed significance as the global attention is focused on U.S.-Iran tensions post the killing of Iran's most powerful military commander Qasem Soleimani by a U.S. drone strike earlier this month. Zarif at the conference said, an existing nuclear deal Iran struck with world powers in 2015 was not dead and that he was unsure if any new pact agreed by U.S. President Donald Trump would last. Trump's administration had abandoned the pact aimed at curbing Iran's nuclear program in 2018 and has since reimposed economic sanctions on Tehran. Moving on, a hospital reports of Pakistan's former Prime Minister Nawaz Sharif have revealed that he is suffering from a severe cardiac disease and is at risk of another heart attack. The reports came a day after an image of Nawaz Sharif in a London restaurant went viral, which raised doubts over his deteriorating health. An accountability court had allowed Sharif to leave for London for medical treatment last year, despite ordering seven years in prison to him in the corruption case. 
Pakistan's former Prime Minister Nawaz Sharif is suffering from a severe cardiac disease. His latest medical reports by the Royal Promptum Hospital in London have revealed. Sharif's personal physician, Dr. Adnan Khan, in a tweet on Tuesday, shared the three different medical reports which suggested the former Premier's heart is at risk of another heart attack or an adverse cardiac event. The reports further recommended urgent heart intervention, which is important for Sharif's survival. This comes as an image of Nawaz Sharif in a London restaurant went viral, in which he was seen sitting along with family members and looked stable. The image was uploaded by Federal Science Minister Fawad Chaudhary on Twitter, which raises doubts over Sharif's health, to which Dr. Adnan Khan had said, Sharif has been recommended by the doctors to go out for short walks, but sadly, the issue is being politicised. On December 24, 2018, an accountability court had sentenced Nawaz Sharif to seven years in prison in the Al Azizia Still Mill corruption case. But due to his health condition, he was allowed to leave for London for medical treatment in November last year. At least 59 people were killed and many more were missing after avalanches hit Pakistan-administered Kashmir over the last 24 hours, officials said on Tuesday. Meanwhile, heavy snowfall in southwestern Balochistan destroyed several houses in the mountainous region, killing 17 people. At least 59 people were killed and many more were missing after avalanches in Pakistan-administered Kashmir over the last 24 hours, officials said on Tuesday. A video emerged from Arankil village showing people rescuing a man buried under snow. Rescue team said they had managed to extract more than 50 people in the Neelam Valley from the snow as many villagers were still stranded by the avalanches following heavy rain that also triggered landslides. Meanwhile, heavy snowfall in Balochistan destroyed several houses in the mountainous region, killing 17 people. The Disaster Management Authority declared an emergency in seven districts of the Mineral Ridge Province and sought the Army's help for relief and rescue operations. Key highways connecting Pakistan and Afghanistan were also blocked due to heavy snow. Meanwhile, in neighboring India, at least 10 people, including four soldiers and a border security force personnel, were reportedly killed in the past 48 hours after several avalanches hit the northern part of India's Jammu and Kashmir. In news from Afghanistan, former Afghan warlord Gulbuddin Hekmatyar has said that the U.S. has asked the Taliban to agree to the presence of some of its forces in Afghanistan and cut ties with Iran after a potential peace agreement between the two sides. Leader of Hizb e Islami Party, Gulbuddin Hekmatyar, on Tuesday said that the U.S. has asked the Taliban to agree to the presence of some of its forces in Afghanistan and cut ties with Iran. Former warlord Hekmatyar said the U.S. brought these two issues as preconditions for signing a peace agreement with the Taliban. This comes days after U.S. Secretary of State Mike Pompeo blamed Iran for undermining the Afghan peace process and said the Iranian government has links with militant groups in Afghanistan. Meanwhile, White House National Security Advisor Robert O'Brien in an interview with the news website said that the U.S. and the Taliban might finalize a peace agreement during the current year. With no consensus among the parties for peace process, the U.S. Special Envoy Zelme Khalilzad is reportedly expected to meet Afghan leaders in Kabul once the Taliban finalizes its position on the reduction of violence. Afghan government, led by President Ashraf Ghani, has maintained that the Taliban must accept a ceasefire ahead of any peace talks and without a ceasefire, there would be no peace talks. Braving the winter chill, Hindu women in Nepal have been gathering at the banks of Salinadi River to take holy dips and offer prayers as part of rituals of a month-long religious festival. The annual festival in the Himalayan nation is marked by fasting and reading sacred text. 
Hindu women in Nepal have been gathering at the banks of Sali Nadi River to take holy dips and worship Lord Madhav Narayan as part of rituals during an ongoing festival of Sri Swasthani Brat Katha. The month-long festival is marked by fasting, especially by women for their family's welfare or for getting a good spouse. The festival usually begins from the full moon day in January and ends on the next full moon day. Devotees during the festival read one chapter out of 31 lessons a day from the religious book Swasthani, which comprises of stories including tales on creation of the world, Hindu deities and demons. <laughs> अनि यहाँ साल चार बजे संख्या बजाऊं दे आऊं ना उनसे सांगा ना रू अनि संख्या बजाऊं बच्चे अमी सुतनो उन्दा ना अनि वो आले संख्या बजाऊं बच्चे अमी आरा साली नदी माय आरा अनि माधव नारन भगवान ले माची स्नान कर आऊं ना उनसे अमी ताल बड़ा स्नान कर सों Devotees who observe fast during the festival do not eat foods cooked by others they only eat rice sugar peas among those considered sacred. On the final day of the fasting, all the offerings made to different gods are immersed in the river. An annual three-day international kite festival coinciding with the Hindu festival of Makar Sakranti was held recently with much enthusiasm in India's southern Hyderabad city. The event witnessed a heavy rush of local visitors and participants from over 15 countries. Enthusiastic kite flyers from across the world fill the skies with different colors as they flew hundreds of different shaped kites during an international festival in India's southern Hyderabad city recently. As many as 50 foreign and 55 Indian kite flyers participated in a three-day long event. Kite flyers from over 15 countries including Australia, Indonesia, Ukraine and the United States showcased their skills at the event. करीबन 15 कंट्री से 50 इंटरनेशनल काइट फ्लायर जो टॉप टॉप के इंटरनेशनल काइट फ्लायर से ये पार्टिसिपेट कर रहे हैं और दूसरा 55 डोमेस्टिक जो इंटरनेशनल काइट फ्लायर है डोमेस्टिक के वो पार्टिसिपेट कर रहे हैं काइट फ्लाइंग हैज बीन अ रिचुअल इन इंडिया ऑन हिंदू फेस्टिवल ऑफ मकर संक्रांति फॉर इयर्स नाउ व्हिच इज सेलिब्रेटेड एवरी ईयर ऑन जनवरी 14 this day is set to mark the end of the winters and transition into spring season in India, bringing joy for the farmers of getting new crops. Scores of participants got into arenas as the traditional bull taming festival of Jalika 2 began in southern India on Wednesday. More than 2,000 bulls will participate in Jalika 2, which will be held till January 31st in the province. The traditional bull taming festival of Jalika 2, which is part of Harvest Festival Pongal, kicked off in Madurai district of India's southern Tamil Nadu province on Wednesday. The Indian version of the Spanish sport doesn't aim to kill the bulls but to dominate and tame them and pluck away bundles of money or other treats tied to their specially sharpened horns. A retired district judge who is overseeing the moral conduct of Jalika 2 in Madurai said, that specific instructions have been given to participants under legal guidelines to not commit atrocities on the bulls and ensure operating within legal limits. Scores of participants got into arenas as the competition began. More than 2,000 bulls will participate in Jalika 2 which will be held till January 31st in the province. <laughs> Batch batch I have our yellow tin jewelry, one one more, one one batch of yellow tin jewelry. Ule, Yeraka putte, or the Kala yellow, one two meter one Kala yellow, one putte, and the Kala yellow, one another. Most of the area, proper proper, one another. Many, 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 it is cruel and not in keeping with what it described as the country's non-violent traditions. However, the Tamil Nadu government passed the Jalika 2 bill in 2017, allowing the conduct of the traditional sport. Well, that's all we have for you from South Asia this evening. Now our viewers can watch the show on SouthAsianNewsline.com. You can also visit us on Facebook.com slash Newsline and follow us on Twitter at Newsline. That's all in tonight's edition. We'll see you same time tomorrow. Good night.